Hi all, sticking to the theme of the English opening of Andrew Webster, in round three where he had White again, he was playing Burke Mortal, and he played, I think, this English opening quite beautifully. So knight c6, bishop d2, black played a very aggressive move here, f5. So how does the, the, the English player, playing the English opening I mean, um, not necessarily the English, how, how do we react to this? Well, Andrew went for the e3 plan here after knight c3, so he's playing maybe d4. Black struck out with d5, a temporary pawn sack. Now this looks actually kind of dangerous, but after cd knight b4, Andrew simply played d3. Okay, securing the d3 square to stop knight d3 checks. Um, I think d4 uh, might not be that good. Actually, just just let's actually just make sure d4 is not absolutely terrible. If d4, then e4 actually, and black, according to Ripka, has a significant small edge because black will be getting that d5 um, pawn and have a very comfortable position. But after this this subtle little move d3, it's still in white's favour. So knight takes f d5, knight takes, knight takes, and now instead of knight e2, another little subtlety, just knight f3 here. So putting a bit of pressure on e5 builds up white's advantage slightly. Okay, time to turn Ribka off. So white has a small edge out of the opening again. This is a bit like a mix between a Sicilian um, shaven ingon with the little uh, flexible pawn center and a finchetto bishop. Bishop d6, castles, and now bishop e6. And now instead of actually playing for d4, which always allows e4, um, Andrew plays e4. So this is these are the finesses which I think distinguish the true master of, of the English opening, not to routinely counter strike with d4 just because the opponent's played f5 but to look for other opportunities like the e4 break as well because here it's it's potentially isolating the e5 pawn and exposing that to a frontal attack so f takes e and now not immediately just taking but actually playing knight g5 so getting more central control and peace pressure i think in this line and driving that bishop to an awkward square preventing uh routine castling so Black's already uh, standing a lot worse out of the opening. So again, this is a case, you know, talented players, talented players can get advantages, small advantages from playing quietly sometimes in the opening. But there are finesses, you know, which particular pawn break, you know, um, and why, depending on the exact position, you know, you still play with finesse. So Queen F6, and now Knight F3. So none of this f4, white doesn't need to weaken this diagonal. He can just keep that bishop on e4, blockading the isolated e pawn. And just build up more pressure positionally. So bishop e6, and now d4, getting rid of that potentially backward pawn on the d file. Uh, which, so it's now just putting more pressure on the center. And after ed, bishop g5, Black plays queen f7, and it's a miserable position for black already. Knight takes d4. So if black routinely castles, it will be catastrophic because knight e6 and bishop d5. Um, let's, let's see that, just, just to demonstrate knight takes e6. There's no queen f2s or anything. Bishop takes d5. End of game. Screwing queen is king. So this is dangerous. So black plays actually c6. And Andrew takes anyway, getting that valuable light squared bishop plays rook e1. Again, castling is out of the question because the bishop takes h7. So bishop takes 7 just winning the queen. So again, routine castling is out of, out of the window. So king d7, so black stands terribly uh, worse. And now a nice little move, queen b3, pressure points. b7, d5, bring the rook in. The rooks are blasting down these two files thanks to the pawn breaks. Careful pawn breaks of e4 followed by d4 from white earlier. King c7, now rook a d1. Lovely position to have with the white pieces. Rook a e8, and now white takes on d5, winning material. Um, well, forcing black to give up queen for two rooks, which with black's coordination, this isn't good in this particular position. So queen takes, rook takes, rook takes, king g2. Because immediately, actually, c takes d, there'll be queen c3 check, hitting that rook 
and the king. So black is is losing on material here. So rook e5 was played, and now Andrew finishes elegantly. He tears to shreds the black uh, king position. Okay, his two bishops are, are forked anyway by that rook, and maybe this is what black had in mind. But with this move, bishop takes c6. It's exposing the black king. Black has no time now for rook takes g5 because the queen takes b7 and queen d7 mate. Okay, so he takes on c6, and now we see bishop f4. Very dangerous position. So skewing the, the rook and bishop, and I think there's also the horrible threat now of, of queen c4 as well as queen c3 as as a another one. So black tries to defend himself with rook d5. Okay, so there's check, and there's a check now on a4. And there's a purpose now revealed to all this. After king c7, there's the killer blow. I wonder if you can spot it if I give you uh, 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, queen d4, fret, queen takes c5 check because that's that bishop's pinned. Fret, queen takes g7 check, winning the rook. Fret, queen takes d6. There's too many frets to deal with. So say rook c6, just queen takes g7, winning the rook. Bishop takes f4, just queen takes c5. It's all over. Let's have a look at that again, again, from a quiet English opening. Um, a small advantage is built up through finesse uh, of not, you know, pretending to play maybe d4, but, but reacting so appropriately to black's d5. Reminds me actually of last year's London Classic. I was excited to play d5, but um, with finesse and, and a little uh, playing the exact position, why it still ends up with advantage. This little tactical trick, you know, is is not like falling for a trap. Why it can just play, you know, instead of d4, which would allow e4, giving Black what he wants, some trump cards. You know, knight takes d5 later, a vicious attack. You know, c6 the support, the knight on d5. No. All of that is firmly ruled out by this next move, d3. This is how to play the English opening. So knight f takes d5, and now no routine d4 again. Knight f3, e5 is the focal point here. Try and expose it, try and isolate it, try and put pressure frontally on it, on that e5 pawn. So after castles, e4 is, is the right move. Possibly. <laughs> so after f takes, there's knight g5, and white definitely is securing a bigger advantage here. Black never even managed to to, to castle here after this d4. There's real problems. If if castles here, there's d takes and bishop takes d5. So black's already under enormous pressure now in this continuation after knight takes d4. He he can't castle. He stopped from castling, and the rooks are blasting now down the D and E files. So in, in, an invitation, an open invitation for two rooks for the Queen, with this seemingly, you know, Black's going to get two rooks for the Queen for sure. But now this Bishop takes C6, really damages the Black King position. So after Bishop F4, now here, here is the key question, you know, was, say, Rook E7 adequate? It seems a difficult position. Um, let's just engine check this just briefly, this uh, position here instead of rook d5. Apparently here, queen c3 is very strong, then queen d4, because again, uh, black has to give up the bishop, because if rook e6, there's queen takes g7 winning that rook. So that's possibly why that, that was a disaster as well. So black maybe was, was without defense here when he played rook d5. So losing with these similar motifs, this unprotected rook, is a real tactical liability. Hope you enjoyed that game. Another game with the English opening. If you want to try the English opening in some of your games, um, comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.